and welcome to Brilliant Creatures. The show where you can meet some of the world's most amazing animals. I'm Stephen. I'm Gail. And here are some of the stars on today's show. There's Zeta the Zebra. Can we make her disappear before your very eyes? Find out why black and white stripes make for brilliant camouflage. And whose poo is this? And why is there so much of it? Stephen investigates. And put it to the test, we meet this shocking electric eel. This brilliant creature could power your house. And Stephen faces his greatest fear. He spends a day with more than 750 snakes. Meet Posy. She's a little Yorkshire Terrier dog. Have a look at how small her colour is. It's tiny, isn't it? It's actually quite funny how small it is. But who or what? does this belong to? Well, this belongs to Beefy, and Beefy's an old English Mastiff, and here he is, look at him. He's gorgeous, isn't he? And he certainly is very large. He is huge, isn't he? <laughs> now, Posey here measures just 20 centimetres in height. Look, 20 centimetres just there. And you're not gonna believe this, the smallest dog ever was a Yorkshire Terrier, and it measured, wait for it, just seven centimetres. Now that is small, isn't it? Wow, that's amazing. Now, Old English Mastiffs are the largest dogs in the world. When fully grown, they can be up to one metre high. And get this, they can weigh up to 104 kilograms. That's nearly the same as 500 tins of baked beans and 76 times as heavy as Little Posy. And when you see what they eat, you can understand why. Look, a little dinner for the Little Yorkshire Terrier and a very large dinner for the very large Old English Mastiff, <laughs> but they're both brilliant, brilliant creatures. creatures. <laughs> Whose poo do you think this is? Any ideas? Let's have a closer look, shall we? Oh, it doesn't smell very nice at all. It's all sort of ugh, it's horrible. It's full of seeds, so I would think it's some sort of creature that eats a lot of fruit. I've got no idea, I don't know about you. Stephen, can you throw any light on this? Well, I think I can, and I'm definitely in the right place, and I've got to tell you, it's a little bit scary, you know? So whose poo is it? It's from these. These are Rodrigue's fruit bats, or flying foxes. They live on a small island in the Indian Ocean called Rodrigue's Island. As well as being the only flying mammal, bats are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and fly out at dusk to feed on ripe aromatic fruit, such as bananas, <laughs> also figs and, <laughs> and papayas. And because they eat all of that fruit, they poo a lot. In fact, they poo every 15 minutes throughout the day and night. Now, some of you may be thinking that's no, <laughs> no. Thank you. No big deal, and you would be right. But because they roost in such large numbers all together side by side, they make a lot of mess. There are only 60 bats here at Jersey Zoo, but just have a look at all this poo, and that's just in one day. In the wild, bats roost in larger numbers. Sometimes, you're not gonna believe this, up to one million. Now imagine how much poo that would make. Whoa. Meet Zeta. She's a brilliant zebra and she's absolutely beautiful, isn't she? The most striking thing about her is her stripes. They really make her stand out in the crowd. They do. So would you believe me if I told you that those stripes actually help her to become invisible? It's true. Now, in the wild, you see zebras are food for loads of animals, but their main predator is the lion. So in order to survive, zebras really have to blend in with the crowd. So let's try and recreate some of the conditions that make that possible. Okay, first of all, let's have a more natural backdrop, like 
Ah, this one here. Now, this is the sort of colour that you would expect to see on the African plains. OK, add some plants. And look, her stripes actually match the spiky vegetation. See, now it's becoming more confusing, isn't it? Because you don't know where the grass blades finish and the stripes begin. Well, it's even more confusing for the lion. Because lions don't see like we do. They're actually partially colourblind. They see less than half the colours that we do. So, if we now do this, we're now in lion vision. And that patterned coat actually breaks up her outline because all the colours are blending together. Well, look, her stripes hardly stand out at all. And because zebras hang around in large groups, Zeta here is not the only target for the hungry lion. So the chances of you being eaten are much less in a large group. And because there's loads of zebras, there's so many stripes, which confuses the lion even more because he doesn't know where one zebra starts and another one finishes. And to complete the illusion... Add a heat haze. And the intense heat of the African plain creates this effect, which means that all the zebras blend in together. It's just one big stripey blob. Striking stripes make brilliant camouflage. So forget khaki green and sludge brown. If you want to blend in the crowd, go black and white. They're brilliant colours for brilliant creatures. Card five of ten. Name. Elephus Maximus, also known as the Indian Elephant. Special power, aqua flotation. Incredible though it may seem, these brilliant creatures can swim. Despite their enormous weight and bulky body, the elephant powers its way through the water, driving itself with those huge muscle-bound legs. As you may know by now, there's one particular brilliant creature that I'm not that keen on. Snakes. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm frightened of snakes, but the thought of being surrounded by them or even holding one just makes me want to shake. So, today's brilliant creature challenge is a big deal for me. Stephen had to spend a day with a lady who rescues unwanted and mistreated snakes. Uh, 750 of them, to be precise. Her house is filled to bursting with rescued reptiles, all of whom need special care and attention. This is the House of Snakes. And this is Maureen, who lives here. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Stephen. Come on in. There's snakes everywhere. This room was the dining room. And this is where we keep the baby snakes. And finally, Stephen, my bedroom. This has got to be my worst nightmare. Maureen has 15 of the biggest snakes in here, and she actually sleeps in the same room as them. Seriously, it's just unbelievable. Now, the first part of my challenge is I've actually got to hold on to one of the snakes. Let's do it. This is Raj. Go on, tell me what's up. There we go, Stephen. Just let him grip onto you. That's it. I should point out, Stephen, that he's a lot easier to hold than a wriggly <laughs> baby snake. Is... Stay steady, Stephen. If you're nervous, he'll actually pick up on that. Well, I think he'll be picking up on it soon, Maureen. No. You're doing very well. OK, so we've done the first part of the challenge, everyone. I am holding on to the snake. There we are. Oh, please, Lucas, he's even trapped around my arm. Can we move on? We're going to place her into this pillowcase. Yeah. Head first, if you can. OK, go on. That's it. <laughs> and she weighs four kilos! She's a big girl. Now, the next part of the challenge I'm not happy about, it involves cleaning a snake. <sighs> One of the disadvantages of not having legs is you have to slither through anything that's in your way, including your own poo. Now, snakes cannot wash themselves, so we're going to have to clean this one. Get some disinfectants and put it on the kitchen roll. All right, yeah. And Start then from the head and bring the tissue down on the snake as though you were peeling back a sausage. 
Okay, that's unreal, isn't it? Do you know something? This snake is now so clean, it's almost kissable, but not quite. That wasn't as bad as I thought, but now it's the final stage of the challenge. I have to feed a snake. Thank you, it's a small one. I don't think I could have done this if it was a big snake, you know. It's dinner time. Oh. Place it gently in front of the snake's head and wait for him to bite. Oh. Your challenge <laughs> is wow. complete. So do you know something? Not only have I held a snake, I've cleaned a snake, and now I've fed a snake. Mission completed. I and you. <laughs> Right, now it's part of the show where we're going to put your and Stephen's animal knowledge to the test. We're going to play you an animal call and you've got to have a guess at which brilliant creature is making that noise. Now remember, I have no idea which animal it's going to be, but it's definitely an animal that you and I would have heard of before. Now, um, I'm sure you're doing better than me considering that I haven't got one right so far. You're absolutely dreadful, yes. but have a listen, so let's see we if go. we can change it. This is an easy one. It's an easy one. It's a woodpecker. <laughs> it's not a woodpecker. Oh, come on. Have another listen. <laughs> come on. I have had it. What? It's, it's not a dolphin, is it? Oh, is it, I don't believe it. Is, it, it is a dolphin. I'm going right. Dolphins communicate to each other using those sort of clicking sounds and also whistles. And believe it or not, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Believe it or not, every dolphin has its own unique whistle, which is as individual to the dolphin as our names are to us. Well done. He's got one right. <laughs> This brilliant creature is an electric eel. Now, although he's got that really disgusting looking mouth, he's actually got no teeth. So how do you think he kills his victims? Well, this you're not gonna believe. In its long, slim body, it has a series of batteries that stores and generates electricity. Now, when it sees the fish that it wants to eat, it gets up close, then releases the charge from the tip of its tail, and that means, one fried fish. And we're going to put this electrifying ability to the test. Each of these bowls will light up when they receive a certain amount of electric current. These are connected to the eel's tank and should pick up any electricity the eel discharges. Are you ready? I am. Okay. Let's put our probes in. Okay, so put these electrodes near the eel. We don't even have to touch the eel to pick up the electricity. Just see what happens. Right. You ready, Gal? Here I'll we go. I'll go near his head. You go near his tail. Look! Oh, wow! Two bulbs already? Do you have another go? Okay. Get closer. That's 100 volts of electricity. That's amazing. I didn't right, think this I'll go work. near his tail this time. Ready? <laughs> Look, it's four! Oh, oh, four light bulbs! <laughs> I can't amazing. believe that actually worked. That's I know. amazing. That's 200 volts of electricity discharged from that eel. Unreal. Now, of course, the bigger the eel, the bigger the shock. This one is only 45 centimetres long, but in the wild they can grow up to two and a half metres and generate up to 650 volts. Now that's enough power, are you ready for this gal, to light up three houses. And definitely enough power to kill either of us. Or you. So the next time you're wading through the murky waters of the Amazon, be careful where you tread. The electric eel, a shockingly brilliant creature. And next time on Brilliant Creatures, meet the kickboxing champion of the animal world. It's the kangaroo. And there's something for you to try at home. In Do It Yourself, find out how webcams can take you round the world to meet more brilliant creatures. And in Little and Large, meet the mini and the monster of the donkey world. Plus, what happens when Stephen tries to take a blood sample from a killer whale? Find out on the next Brilliant Creatures. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to check out our website, the address is at the bottom of your screens now. And we'll be seeing you very soon for more of the world's most Brilliant, brilliant creatures. creatures. Bye. Bye. See ya.